when you're young, you're more interested in yourself when you're young. And I suppose when I was really young, I didn't realise what they'd both been through. I knew, I knew it, of course, but they didn't talk about it. They didn't talk about it very much. I admire them both greatly and wish I'd done other things too, done more for them, yes, yes. Well, my, my mother was born in Mount Perry. She trained at the Brisbane General Hospital. And when war was declared, she volunteered almost at once to join the nurses going, going abroad. My mother and father did not meet till after the war, but they both went abroad with the same convoy. My father on the Hororata with the 7th Battalion and my mother, one of the four nurses, on the Omra. The Queenslanders with the 9th Battalion. They all met up at, at Albany and this big convoy set off, escorted by the Sydney and a Japanese cruiser as well, and protecting the convoy. The word came that the, the Emden, that famous ship, was nearby at Cocos Islands. And the Sydney set off immediately to, to take on the Emden. And they engaged in that battle there. The, the Emden was outclassed by the, the Sydney and uh, the Emden was very badly damaged. Von Mueller, the captain of the Emden, ran it onto the coral to stop it being taken by the Sydney. Some of the survivors, 40 of them, were brought onto the Omra. From a diary, she said, eight of them came every day to hospital, have their wounds dressed. Doctor removed a big piece of shell that was deeply embedded in an arm. They were on the Omra for about a fortnight. German prisoners left this morning to the Hampshire. Sorry to see them go. Uh, Jacob Giebel, one of them, presented me with his cap band. The gift of the cap band could have been one of the first gifts of friendship between Australians and Germans in that war. Well, my, my mother, well, she went to, to Cairo. The troops were training in the desert and the, the nurses and the medical men were uh, getting the hospitals ready. But they naturally had spare time and so the nurses saw a lot of the men. And that one young boy, Colin Reed, the day before he left for the Dardanelles came to see her and gave my mother his mother's address so that if anything happened to him, she could write to his mother. They had some good idea that they mightn't come back. He was killed. My mother was really very upset about him and she wrote in her diary, poor little laddie, I loved him so. <laughs> he was only 19, she said about him. Because my mother had a lot of friends. There were a lot of the, there was no, no romance, anything like that. It was just, they were just friends. That's on the 25th of April. My father's in the boat. I think what is very sad about it is there are several men you can see slumped over the side. They're, they've already been hit and they look as if they'd, they've been killed. And they haven't even reached the shore. This is from a letter to my mother's family uh, about the Gallipoli landing. I don't know if the news is known in Queensland yet, but the greater part of the men we came over with are either wounded or killed. The whole battalion was practically cut to pieces. We did not get any of the wounded till Thursday, April 29th. 
This afternoon, two trains arrived with our first wounded, and it's a happening that will be in our memories as long as we do. To see these men walking and wounded coming in, in an endless, silent procession, just too awful. No sound except that, that of walking. The wards began to fill, so many beds in all, many of the ninth men. Just too awful meeting them in the hall, on the stairs, everywhere. 11 p.m. to bed but not to sleep. Cried my eyes out. Hear more trains today, fewer walking, many more carried in. The work almost appalling, seems hopeless. Men wonderfully brave and hopeful, but their eyes, the expression of them, just like dumb animals, makes me cry just to look at them. These young men who'd never hurt a soul in their lives, going ashore with fixed bayonets to land and invade. And the sad thing is too, when the wounded did come back from Gallipoli, a lot of them told my mother that they liked the Turks, they always fought fair, and they didn't know why they were fighting them. My father survived Gallipoli, and then he went to Cape Hellas with the 7th Battalion. I don't think this gets as much publicity as other actions do, because there weren't so many Australians involved in that. And there weren't many left after the action at Cape Hellas and when they were trying to take Krithia. It haunted my father for the rest of his life. He saw service right through the, the whole war. Well, my, my mother from Egypt, she went to England for, for a while and then she was in, in France being in 1917 and 18. She was in casualty clearing stations closest to the front line on the Western Front towards Belgium. Wherever she went, she made it as attractive as she, as she could, her little room or tent or whatever she was in. And she had a little office there and she decorated it with pictures taken out of magazines. And outside she had a, a little garden. The boys would bring in ferns and other plants. And she heard them singing a song about the prettiest little office on the Western Front. And then there was song that was popular in those days, My Little Grey Home in the West. And they were singing about My Little Grey Home on the Western Front. And Mum didn't realise, of course, they were singing about, about her little office and the prettiest little office on the Western Front. and she stayed for another year after the end of the wars. And they met, I think it was south of Brisbane, this convalescent place. And they married, I think, early 1920s. And, and the first photo I have of, of them is of late 1923 with their first child. Mm. The thing about them was they never complained. They were never bitter about some things, but very sad about some of the things that should never have happened.